Hello, everybody. My name's James, and welcome to an intro to Euro Fantasy. I'm joined by Clayton Fernandez. How are you, Clayton? Bonjour. Very well, very well. What do you mean, bonjour? <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're going to do that, at least say, like, Guten Morgen or Guten Tag or Guten right, Abend. What's, what's wrong with the French, James? Well, the, the, there's nothing wrong with the French, <laughs> other than they're probably a bit too good for everybody else. But the tournament's in Germany, Clayton. <laughs> yeah, fair play. So learn some German. Good, guten Tag. Nah, you told me yesterday you're going to England's first game, so learn some German. And Good when now. teams get eliminated, we all say, Auf Wiedersehen. Um, in this podcast, we're going to do a little bit of an intro to the UEFA game uh, for Euro Fantasy. If you are already absolutely clued up 100% on the basics of the game, you may want to skip quite a large bit of this. We are going to have a chat towards the end of this, though, on chip strategy um but this is largely an intro to the game and how it works for people who haven't played it before we're going to come off cover off some differences in point scoring to fpl we're not going to go through everything uh and then we're going to have a a little look at some of the the inner workings of the game budget how many transfers you can make when etc cetera, etc cetera, and then we'll do some chip strategy bits at the end sound good clates sounds good let's do it all right, I'm going to cover off some bits of changes in terms of points to FPL scoring. It's largely scores quite similarly. There are a couple of differences. Uh, one, Clay, you get an extra bonus point for uh, goals scored from outside the penalty area. Yeah. Um, okay. I can that, that at some point will be a debate. Was he in the box? Was he outside the box? Um, but the guys who like the long rangers, your Bruno Fernandes, your Kevin De Bruyne, these sort of players... Um, we'll get an extra point if they score from outside the box. There is no bonus system uh, as such in this game, but there are additional three points awarded for the man of the match. Um, that makes Sky players pull their hair out a little bit. Um, but the man of the match is decided by UEFA's official awards. I would suggest quite often this will be won by some of the more popular players. If Mbappe scores twice in a game, you could be pretty sure that he's probably going to get the man of the match as an example. Um, it's still three points for an assist across the board, but there are some differences, and this is also going to cause some pain for people at some points. So an assist must be intentional. So if the ball like ricochets off someone and then someone scores, a player is not going to get the assist, whereas in FPL it would be awarded as uh, this person had the last touch and it fell to his teammate and he scored. It must be deemed as intentional. Proper so it's assist. not It's not necessarily the player with the last touch. The one that will drive people insane is that there's no assist awarded for a goal that's scored after a solo run or a dribble. So example, um, Declan Rice gives Phil Foden the ball 40 yards from goal and Phil Foden goes and beats a player and scores, Declan Rice won't get the assist, even though it's just oh, wow, okay. Declan Rice has passed him the ball. He won't get it. So any goal that's scored after a dribble or a solo run, no assist will be awarded. It will drive people bonkers. Yeah, that's a bit um, weird. It's a strange one, but it's how UEFA have always done it for the fantasy games in terms of their awarding of their assist. There is one point picked up for free ball recoveries in a game uh, and it does mean it's kind of a long held thought process in FPL like how do we make our holding midfield players a little bit more attractive someone like Declan Rice probably will pick up a lot of ball recoveries some of the centre backs will pick up a lot of ball recoveries Matt Hummels in the Champions League was an absolute yeah, joke a freak. for this yeah. in terms of the amount of ball recoveries you won't be picking him in this this year because Germany are apparently so good defensively that they haven't picked him, although everyone keeps telling me that Germany are a bit ropey defensively, actually. But that's an extra way where some of these filler players can pick up additional points. So take someone like one of your boys, Clayton, Jorginho. Mm -hmm. I say your boys as Arsenal, not Italy. Yeah. Um, who's uh, cheap. I think he's five million in this. Every chance he'll be on penalties. Every chance he'll start. Just by position, yeah. he'll end up recovering the ball. Nice little enabler, yeah. So, He's the sort of player, actually, if he got given a penalty in a game and he scores, there's every chance he could haul. That's not to say you should be sticking a captaincy on someone like this, but it does make some of these players a little bit more attractive that we would normally perhaps just write off in FPL. 
Uh, two points rewarded for winning a penalty. Um, Raheem Sterling hasn't rocked up to the tournament, but Anthony Gordon has. That's possibly part why to replace Sterling in terms of winning free kicks and penalties for England. Anthony Gordon, if he starts enough, will win a penalty for England in the tournament. There you go. You can quote me on that now. He won't get the assist as well, <laughs> just to be clear. Oh, where's my assist? Yeah. You, get, you get two points for winning the penalty, whether it's scored or not. It doesn't okay. have to be scored. Win a penalty, get two points. It's also minus one if you have a player who concedes a penalty. So if you've got someone who's a little bit rash in the tackle, you might yeah. want to be a, a little bit hands bit aware on. of that. Uh, talking of hands-on, an exception to this is um, it doesn't count for hand balls. So if Gordon put a cross in that was then blocked by a hand and given as a penalty, he won't get two points given for the award of that penalty. The player essentially has to be fouled. Um, handballs won't count. And similarly, if your player gives away a penalty via a handball, they won't get a deduction for that either. Um, Clayton, do you want to cover off some of the nuances in terms of actual play and what we can and can't do when selecting a tech? Yeah, so there's seven match days and you have a nice, healthy 100 million euro budget. Uh, this increases to 105 million uh, in the last 16. You get to pick three players per team. This goes up to four in the last 16, five in the quarterfinals, six in the semis, and then in the final, you can have eight per team. Uh, never understood a cap on that personally in these competitions. What, the eight? Uh, just in general. I feel like you should be able to pick whoever you want in these Oh, what, tournaments. with no limitations? Yeah, personally. Mm, I don't know. I think it opens up for the, the price and then the game means you could probably pick a blanket. I mean, in, in theory, it probably wouldn't be too difficult to put England's 11 on the pitch, for example. That wouldn't help you on things like captaincy, as we'll, we'll cover off. Yeah. But yeah, I think even I was thinking about this, why limit to eight in the final? And I guess it would just stop everyone having 11 players from the same team Yeah. Um, as per kickoff, because obviously you, you, you can pick your team once you know the, the lineups, as you'll cover yeah, in a sec. True. Um, but yeah, as you spoke about there briefly, captaincy. So captaincy is quite fun. So as I said, the seven different match days, you can change your captain each day, essentially. So on match day one, let's just say on the Friday evening, I forgot what the fixture is. Already? You forgot yeah, what the is, opening game is? It's Germany, obviously, but I forgot who they're playing. <laughs> oh, wow. The Scots are going to love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 my bad uh so yeah you pick a captain on that day let's just say your captain blanks you can then kind of roll it and change it to the next day and so on and so on uh yeah and you can keep doing that with your captaincy you can essentially gamble so an example would be here maybe you captain Kai Havertz night one Germany against Scotland and he scores once Okay, and he might just get you a six pointer. Like, what do you want to do? You want to you want to bank those points? Nah, rolling or, that. Or do you want to move the captaincy on? So, absolutely. Unless you you you're very patriotic and you want to captain a Scotland player in night one, which everybody's entitled to captain Scott McTominay if that's what they want to do. But most people are going to captain a Germany player in night one. I think a good process to do here is to set yourself a target. Like, what does if I captain Kai Havertz in night one? What does he need to score for me not to move that captaincy? So it might be, okay, if he scores twice and then perhaps picks up the man of the match and he's on 13, you might deem that's enough. But I think, and and the further you go along, the more you want to reduce what you'd be happy to take. So yeah. for example, um, Kai Havertz scoring six points in night one for me would be, I'm moving that on. You still keep the six points but you're just moving the captaincy to a different player. So obviously if you left the captaincy on him, you got 12. If you move it on, you keep the six, but you then have a captain the next day on the Saturday. So it might be you want to move to perhaps an Italy player against Albania, for yeah. example. And then on the Sunday night, you might want to go Harry Kane against uh, Serbia, for example. So there's five days in match day one. The later you go, the more you're probably prepared to go all I'll stick with this actually. That will that will do me for now. So for example, on the fourth day, you might have, say, Lukaku uh against you uh who they got, Slovakia. Right. At that point, if he scored once and you've got six points, you're you're then probably in a dilemma of whether you want to maybe go for a Portugal player on the last day or just stick. Yeah. But I think at the start, just one return wouldn't be enough. No. 
you're looking for a hole, aren't you? Yeah. I but the so. later it gets, like I said, it's on sort of like day four or the five, you might go, okay, I'm going to bank that now yeah. to, to give me at least a captain return and maybe not bother with Portugal. I would say because Portugal were playing Czech Republic, it would probably we think probably quite weak, I'd probably still gamble it yeah. under that circumstance if I had a Portugal player. It also means really that when you're selecting your squad, you need you 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 want to have a captaincy for each of the five days. Yeah. That would be clear. So I think most populars will be night one is obviously going to be Germany. Night two, you'll get a little bit of a, a mix. Night three probably is going to be England. Then it's probably going to be Belgium, then Portugal. Yeah. Something like that. And, and before you blink, you've gone, right, so I've got Havertz. I've got uh, Maratta, just for jokes. Uh, Harry Kane, uh, or I think it's Mbappe the same day. Oh, uh, France are day four, are they? It's a, it's a um, my, my app on the start. I, on I, I really should have had my planner in front of me. I, I can tell you. Uh, so night four... Yeah, France on night four, um, same day as Belgium. So it might be not a Belgian player, it's possibly going to be Mbappe, for example, rather than sure. a Belgian player. But you, you certainly could go Lukaku rather than Mbappe. But obviously, you can only have three forwards. Yeah. So, but I think you, when you structure your team, you need to really have at least one of your fifteen players playing on each of the the five days. You want yeah. you want five captains at least, even if it's something rogue, it's a punt. You go. I want one Portugal defender just in case on the final yeah. day. Whatever that is, have something. And even outside of captaincy, I think with how the substitutions work in this as well, it's good to just have a nice split throughout the day. So as James said, there's five days in match day one. So how substitutes work, there's uh, manual subs and auto subs. Auto subs I'll talk about in a second. But with the manual subs, in James's example there, let's just say you captain Havertz on the first day. And let's just say he got one point. You've then got, let's say, Jorginho uh, or sat on your bench. You can then manually sub out Havertz for Jorginho on the second day and so on and so on. So you can constantly take out your lowest scoring players for someone on the bench that hasn't played yet. Uh, and then in the case of auto subs, they only work if your team is actually completely untouched. So you can't then take out Havertz, but forget to do it for the rest of the four days and auto subs kick in. It has to be, you don't touch it at all. Yeah. As soon as you do anything, even if you just move the caps and say auto subs will not work. As yeah. soon as you do anything, the game assumes that you are in charge. Um, so do not assume that auto subs will work. So if you've got a player scores zero because he doesn't play, you pick him and he's injured or he doesn't get on the pitch or whatever, like he ain't coming out unless you take him out. Yeah. So I, I would recommend that everybody goes through the, the manual substitution process. Yeah, What's really important on that is as well, when you're putting your 15 together, don't just put your four shittiest players on the bench. No. Put the four I, I players on the bench. You were... fantasy. Did you really? The first time I played it, not this time around, because I was podding with you, so I learned. Okay, okay. <laughs> put the four players on the bench who were playing latest. So I use the example of Portugal. If hypothetically you went with treble Portugal when they're playing day five in match day one and you've got hypothetically you know Cancelo Fernandez and Ronaldo right that's your three subs yeah um, and on the day before Portugal's uh deadline because I think Portugal were the latest kickoff eight o'clock that day the deadline's five o'clock so between four and five o'clock ideally once you've seen the teams of the earlier game in case that's useful to you you would bring those three Portugal players into your team for your three low scoring players. Yeah. Caveats to that is you've got to remain within your formation system. So you can't end up with two, five, three. Yeah. It's still, in terms of formations that you can play, it's exactly the same as FPL. There's, there's no, no differences to that. You've always got to have three at the back. You've always got to have a goalkeeper. Absolutely key tip here as well, guys, please don't pick a goalkeeper who's playing two goalkeepers playing on the same, same day. day. No, it's <laughs> just a madness. Yeah. Um, and if you're doing that, we'll talk about chips in a bit, but if you're picking two goalkeepers, just check that they're not playing on the same day later on. So I'll give you an example, you might want to go um, with, say, Pickford, French goalkeeper, and maybe a Belgium goalkeeper. The, the, obviously, the French and the Belgium guys are on the same day. So if you've got a dialogue, oh, which two of these three, right, well, Pickford's definitely going to be one. Yeah. Because it doesn't clash with the other two. You don't want two goalkeepers playing on on the same day. That that should be a given because, and I'd also kind of prioritize that position a little bit. 
it's not to say you can't pick enabling goalkeeper, goalkeepers, yeah. but if your goalkeeper doesn't keep a clean sheet, you're making a change. True. So yeah. Make sure that's a, a, that's a definitive change for you. So consider that position as a little bit of importance. I think in the last Euros, a lot of us had um, Haradaki, the Finnish goalkeeper, because he was a four million starter. And obviously he kept oh, a cl- yeah. he kept a clean sheet in against Denmark, um, and obviously the game where Christian Eriksen collapsed, and everyone was like, "Well, that's a Brucey bonus." So it's not like you can't have the enabler, but also it's worth thinking about taking your gambles earlier in the week. Yeah, when Clates and I do the UCL fantasy podcasts on Patreon, we talk about this a lot. Take your gambles earlier in the week, so rather than gambling or, well, I'm not sure if this Portugal player is going to play. Right, that's at the end of your week. Yeah. If there's one you think, oh, I want to have this player who's a bit punty, he's not a certain starter, make sure it's someone earlier in the week that you can obviously then sub out if if they don't play. Yeah. So so the kind of the lower the letter of your group is the more you should be looking at the punts, I think. So Heradiki was in a group A or group B, for example, so it worked nicely. You could play him. If he pulled off a miracle return, great. If he didn't, you had your subkeeper behind yeah. to come on. So there's possibly a school of thought there as well that perhaps your stronger goalkeeper maybe should be later in the week. Days, yeah. As as an example. It's not necessarily how you have to do it, but that's a potential philosophy you could use. Yeah. Final couple before we get onto the chip strategy. Uh, you've obviously touched on it already briefly, but deadline is the first kickoff of each day. So uh, I really like that. Like James said, you can get to see the lineups uh, of the first game uh, and yeah, make your transfers accordingly. So deadline's the first kickoff of each day. But look, were you going to say something there? No, all I was going to yep. say is <clears throat> obviously night one, That's it's an eight o'clock deadline. So I meant, I kind of, for those who listened to yesterday's England podcast, I mentioned a player, Maximilian uh, Mittelstadt, who is going to end up pretty much in all of your teams, as long as he's in the Germany team, basically. Okay. He's a left back for Stuttgart. He's four million. And, um, you and I did a piece on Kai Havertz playing left back for Germany did, on Patreon yeah. um, last autumn. And that's not going to happen again, by the way. Mittelstadt, we think, is going to start. He, he Five chances created in their last friendly against Ukraine. This is not even just like a complete filler. There might even be something there. You might even deem that's what you want for captaincy on night one and save forwards for other teams. That's definitely a way that you could potentially look at it. But do make sure he's in the team. Yeah. No. And I think night one, I don't know, how, ma- how many FPL managers wouldn't look at their FPL team in the hour leading up to deadline for game week one? It's and probably not Fest often. with no signal, right? So, unless you're at Fest with no <laughs> signal, yeah, which we, we, we understand is going to be fixed this year. I'll be doing a stream, most likely, unless Tottenham are at Ipswich on the Friday night, in which case I'll be in Ipswich. Um, no, I have no insight to the fixtures before anyone starts on me on that either. Nobody does at this stage. But yeah, if, if you're going with Germany players, that's clear. So there's an advantage there, right? You could pick whatever three German players you want. You know, if, if all of a sudden it's like, oh, sugar, full croak's playing instead of Havertz, as an example, you might just want to stick him in. Yeah. Use that. <clears throat> Deadlines as well. And I know a lot of people hate the idea of being engaged in a game every day. Yeah. But the deadlines are going to be very similar times. So other than night one is obviously eight o'clock. Through the first week or so, it's two o'clock. Set yourself an alarm between one and half past one every day, UK time, obviously. And then just do what you need to do. And for the first couple of days, you probably didn't need to do anything, right? Other than move your captaincy. There's no major thought needs to go into this. It's a two minute job, really. Yeah. You go in, you move your captaincy if you want to. And obviously, if you're in now position to make your subs, make them. It doesn't take much thought process. Which players am I taking out? Your lowest scoring ones. It's yeah, quite straightforward. Yeah. So it's only, I think what people, oh, deadline every day. You don't need to do a lot. It's just two minutes on the game in the hour run up to a deadline. Do what you need to do. And as I said, if if you've gone Havertz night one and he scores a hat trick against Scotland, and then your outfield substitutes are Portugal players and then perhaps a goalkeeper that's playing on the last day as well. You don't need to even look at it no. for <laughs> three or four days. Later in the tournament, it's just five and eight o'clock. It's an insane process thing. That one might be a bit more awkward for people. Oh my God, that's in the last hour of my work. Go to the toilet. <laughs> it will take two minutes. Right? Yeah. Just go to the toilet, check the five o'clock lineups. Bosh. Punk with your bob. 
Nice one. And uh, yeah, final one before we move on to chip strategy is transfers. Obviously, James said there you're just focusing on your kind of lowest scoring players mostly because after the groups are done, you've got unlimited transfers. So you are literally just focusing your transfers on the group stage, which is obviously just three games. Uh, and you get two transfers in the group stage. This goes up to three for the quarterfinals, four for the semifinals, and then you get five for the final. You can roll one transfer during the group stage between match days. But it's not one. in the knockout stage. You cannot roll a transfer. Just in the in group the stage, stage, not in the knockouts. Yeah. I think for those unfamiliar with the game, the key thing is you don't need to think, well, I think this outsider might get to the semifinal or something like that. Well, look, if you feel like that, then there's every chance they'll do well in the group stage, but you don't need to think beyond it at this stage. Yeah. No one needs to think, about, oh, who are England going to play in the last 16 if they go through? You don't need to worry about it from a fancy perspective. You are just literally looking at the group stage. And then chips um, for people that are new here. You uh, you get a wild card, which is, uh, yeah, same as FPL. You get to change your whole team. Uh, still have to stay within the parameters of the game, but then you've got something called limitless which is a, uh, oh, this is a fun one. You, there's no price limit. <laughs> yeah, I've I've always been interested how limitless would work in FPL. Because, um, I, I mean, I do think that there's certain weeks where it could land. And if you had the big hitters with a double, you know, you City's Liverpool, Arsenal's and stuff, then it, it probably is like, okay, right, Haaland, De Bruyne, Foden, you know, Salah, Trent, they're all yeah. going in, right? But I, 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 I've often felt that it might be something that people want to do on a single game week. If you had like City, Liverpool, and Arsenal all had great home games, for yeah. example, and you're like, oh, I really can't work Steam in into Holland, it. Salah, and Saka this week, for example. Um, yeah, so limitless is uh, essentially probably what it sounds like. There's no budget restriction. Um, there's no hundred million as per the group stage or hundred and five million as per the knockout stage. And you want to put a team together that's going to cost you hundred and thirty, you will be able to do it. Um. With that in mind, it normally makes sense to use the limitless chip in the group stage. Why would you say that is? Two reasons. One, you've got an extra bit of budget for the knockout stage anyway. Two, if you want to steam into, say, five treble ups with really good fixtures, that's much easier to find in a group stage match yeah. day than it is in a court final. Remember, you can't use either of these chips in the last 16 because you will have unlimited going into the last 16. So the last 16, I think, would have maybe been a really good shout for the Limitless chip because because of the third place teams that go through, you will have three or four teams. You're like, oh, they've comfortably got the best fixtures and there'll be one or two will have obviously difficult fixtures in the last 16. But you can't use it in the last 16. You could end up with a quarterfinal lineup, which has got you know, six, seven really good teams. You're like, what am I using this Limitless chip for at, at this stage? So I think ideally you want to use it to target players who've got really good fixtures. Yeah. And we can see that. We can't see the future in the court final of no. you know, it might be that there's a few real surprises and there's a couple of teams have great fixtures in the quarterfinals. And by that stage you can have uh is it five players per team? Yep. And you could do it maybe even just across three teams. But it could easily be that it's like England against Italy, fixtures like this, right? Which look like difficult to call, difficult, for example. Yeah. Whereas in the group stage, you can have a look. Now, so therefore, limitless has got to be two or three because you can't use it in match day one. And I think what I would have ideally probably wanted to do is probably just use the limitless chip and the wildcard chip as free hit chips, okay. basically. Yeah. Which is something like limitless two, wildcard three, and then you know you've got the unlimited to then carry you through the knockout stage. Obviously, once you hit the unlimited period you can obviously project teams' path going forward. Yeah. And there'll be some shocks and something will go wrong and of suddenly course. you'll be there and you go, oh my God, I've only got 10 players. You've got more transfers at that stage to do with it as well. But I think the way the fixtures have landed leans that there's probably a couple of different ways to do it. You can still do it that way. Definitely you can. So you could go limitless two, wildcard three and treat it as a free hit or do it the other way around, wildcard two as a free hit. Limitless free. We define wildcard as like a free hit because you have unlimited afterwards as well. Do you have a preference on either of them based on the match day schedule so far? The problem with match day three is not knowing at this stage what teams will do. 
in terms so, of rotation and stuff. Well, we've got an example. Sorry, we'll use England as an example. But England won the first two games in 2018 World Cup, changed the whole team against Belgium. Yeah. Now, under that circumstance, because England were playing Belgium, probably didn't want any of it anyway, because it would have been a challenging fixture, whatever England had, had done on that day. But you, you could look at it now and you could say, right, so in match day three, I've got a number of teams here who've got really, really good fixtures. So an example might be Portugal were playing Georgia, Belgium playing Ukraine, although that's, that's arguably Belgium's toughest game in their group. France are playing Poland, England playing Slovenia, Spain playing Albania, and you think, great, I'll get coverage of those four or five teams, but it might all get there and it might all be mass rotating. Mm. And if they mass rotate, it kills the purpose of what Limitless is. Because the idea behind Limitless is, is that you can go, right, yeah, Mbappe, Kane, Ronaldo, De Bruyne, Bellingham, you stick them all in, right? Yeah. That's the point. So if you get the match day free and they've all rotated... You can use the wild card then instead of maybe. Well, you, you've just limited the purpose of what Limitless is for, is to be able to put all these massive big hitters in together, basically. And it might work out perfectly. But it might not. Yeah. And it might be... I had it in UCL Fantasy this year where I ended up using the limitless chip as basically just like a free hit chip. But it, you you are losing the purpose of there's no value restriction. Yeah. So I think if you are doing it that way, you probably would go limitless too. The problem with that is the toughest games for, I think, the majority of the nations are in match day two. So I think if we look across the groups, I would say in terms of bookmakers' favourites, Group A, Germany, Switzerland, is probably the two favoured, right? They play in match day three. In Group B, it's probably Spain, Italy, right? They play each other in match day two. Group C, England, Denmark, play each other in match day two. Group D, France, Netherlands, play each other match day two. Mm. Group E is probably Belgium, Ukraine, but that group, I think, Belgium are clear favourites in that because I don't think there's a huge amount of strength in the other three teams there but they play each other match day three. I would say it's Portugal, Turkey in group D and they also play each other in match day two. So across the four, the six groups, four of the biggest games, if you will, are in match day two. And again, what does that do for you for the, the limitless? Yeah, that's true. You're then firing into these big hitting players, but it's when they've got their toughest game. Mm. And it's why I think there's there's a little bit of a surge. You can see it if you if you look through uh, Twitter, et cetera, on people using sort of limitless free and then wildcard for the quarterfinals. Okay. All right. So or, a, or a limitless two and then wildcard quarterfinals. Okay. And then rather than using um, almost like two free hit, we, we, effectively it becomes three free hits, right? If you use limitless two and wildcard free, you've basically got a free hit for each match day in the group stage. Yeah. Because you just pick your first team is just on match day one. Then you've got a chip for two, chip for three, then you're unlimited. You're unlimited then will carry you through the end. But obviously, if, if you use the wild card in quarter final, then you use the last 16 as mm. a free hit. And we've said, because of the way this tournament works, with only eight teams getting eliminated in the group stage, you you are going to have a couple of teams in the last 16. You go, they're going to win this three or four. Yeah. Deal. And you'd use that as a free hit. It might be, example might be, I don't know, Italy have a really good fixture in the last 16 where they've got a third place team, for example. But you might look at the Martin and go, oh, right, well, their path afterwards would maybe be England, France final. You know, How much do I want to carry Italy players? But Stealing if they've got a great the last 16 game. player, to, yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay, I'll still have some of that, for example. I quite like that idea. I think that's what probably a large number of the engaged players are going to do partly because of the awkwardness of match day two. two. Yeah. Where essentially you've got, as I said, kind of eight of the biggest teams are playing each other or at least the most challenging fixture. If you're going limitless and France are playing a Netherlands, sure, France are the favourites, but what's the expectation on that? Okay, France win. Maybe similar with England against Denmark. It's not... It's not hugely appealing. No, it's not a shoo is it? And it does mean, like I said, if you go down that route of limitless three and then the wildcard quarterfinal, it might be that the limitless chip, if if France have won their first two games and have won the group and Mbappe is going to get a rest, you might lose the power of what it's meant to be. Mm. 
Yeah. But that's what it will be, I think. Okay. So uh, that's probably what I favor at the moment. It's probably Limitless 3 and and then um, Wildcard Quarterfinal yeah. to do for the, the last period. What about yourself? I think on the information you've outlined, I'm probably the same just because then I'm treating it as almost well two free hits and then setting yourself up for the rest of the tournament with a uh well not even a b c like you would just have so much information on all of the teams by then as well with like all of the group stages you would have seen them in a knockout game i feel like you'd then be best set up to set yourself up for the rest of the tournament with a wild card quarterfinal as well i do like that the way you've outlined it and i didn't realize how difficult match day two was like i'd seen the fixtures but when you kind of contextualize it with the bookies odds and who the favorites are and most of them playing each other don't like that yeah the only thing is we're obviously leaving the wild card till quarterfinal side and you have to remember it's a small format game oh, what wild card in that late onward well actually from a fancy perspective it's just over halfway even though 90 percent of the games yeah. already happened but the projection um by the way currently on the quarterfinals um according to the bookies would be as follows spain against germany England against Italy, Portugal against the Netherlands, and Belgium against France. Oh, now, see, now I've heard that. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can call it. <laughs> it won't be that. Yeah, of course. It won't be that. We know historically from this tournament particularly, the fact that you could probably go through with a win and a draw and a defeat, some teams really fudge the group stage. Not that they don't take it seriously, but it... Look at Portugal when they Portugal won it in 2016. And he won one game in 90 minutes across the whole tournament. In the group stage, they drew all three games, didn't they? And I can't, I, I can't remember if I played Juve for fantasy in 2016. I'm going to say I probably didn't. But their group was Austria, who people were admittedly talking up as a bit of a dark horse, but were probably sort of like 10th or so in, in favoritism with the bookies to win the tournament. They had Iceland. Let's not talk about that too much. <laughs> and Hungary, who were actually a really fun team to watch, who eventually got spanked by Belgium in knockout stage. But when you looked at that group, you with Portugal, Austria, Iceland, and Hungary, you'd steam into it. Mm. You drew all three games. And, didn't, and that didn't matter. It still went on and won the yeah. tournament. Um, and it gave them a more difficult last 16 tie because they had Croatia in the last 16 as well. So we just know... That historically, and particularly people who want to be bitter about what England have done in tournaments, you know, the draw will open up for England again, kids, right? And you can all <laughs> be really angry about it. It probably won't happen this way because we basically, if we win a group, we'll play, um, we're highly likely to play a team from Spain's group in the quarterfinal. So Spain, Italy, or Croatia is probably going to be one of them, right? As long oh. as we would win the group. So, yeah, exactly. But it will open up for someone where it'll it'll look it suddenly you go oh, okay yeah, yeah great quarter cool final oh and they'll be big favorites in the semis and in any case if it is really tight like that if it's france against belgium what are you gonna do you're yeah, gonna you probably go france fairly place. heavy on france yeah. for example aren't you right so even if it does land that strong i think similar if it's portugal netherlands i think you'd probably go fairly strong on portugal for example as well and then obviously look the semi-finals will be rough the problem with wild card and the quarterfinals is where you'll need balance, and perhaps we'll talk about this later within the tournament. Is if the games are that difficult to call, players you'll lose players because they'll go out. Yeah. But then at that stage as well, you've then got four free transfers for the semi final. Yeah, you can fix your team quite easily. The chances are you'll be able to get 11. You can take hits in this, by the way. You can yeah. take, uh, and it's the same as FPO, it's a minus four if you go beyond the transfer quota. So you could. I don't know, let's say you were left unbelievably from wild card in the quarterfinals. You only had six players went through. You could take a minus four to get you 11. And probably at that stage, how much I'd want to be taking hits to get, oh, 15 players because I can use 15. Probably wouldn't no. wouldn't bother that much. And also remember in the final, obviously, substitutes don't come into play. Oh, of course. You yeah. literally, of course, only need 11, don't <laughs> yeah. you? So you've got five free transfers for the final. So you only need six players to get through to the final to be able to get to a, a complement of 11, which you're not even that bothered about for the final because you've got to pick three teams from a team that you don't think is going to win, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, I think 
that's possibly going to be the most popular way of doing it and then but, use unlimited as a free hit in the last 16 for anyone listening that's not keen on that what would you say is your second favored chip strategy based on the ones you outlined i i still think use the limitless in match day two or three yeah. imagine imagine the quarterfinals are that what i said and it's that strong okay great all the all the big hitters are probably still in the tournament but oh yeah so now i'm, I'm going to Bruin because i can he's playing france I'm going Lukaku because I can because he's playing France. I, I think you, you're losing... You, you'll be able to get the value of the players, no problem, but you're still lose, you, losing what you want, which is to be able to target players who have got one great fixture. Yeah. And I think once you look at match day two and the difficulty of those games, I think it becomes that you probably want to look at limitless in three still. And if it, it does transpire that France mass rotate or England mass rotate, fine, you're perhaps not using all the budget, but you can still go into teams that you know have got something to play for. I remember yeah. a lot of people went for sort of Polish and Swedish players a couple of years ago because they both had to win. And I think it finished 3-2. And people yeah. got good returns from players like on, on both teams and stuff. Um, like Lewandowski hadn't been popular and then it seemed like everyone was going for him who kind of had a chip in, in that final match though. So, yeah, I still think Limitless 2 or 3... I think if you are holding the wild card back, I can't see why you would leave it later than the quarterfinals. No. You're just reducing the pool of players for yourself then, aren't you? And, and well, I just think you're making your life more difficult as well for the unlimited period before the 16. Because you think, you you'd also think, oh, I think this team will go through. I think this team will go course, through. And yeah. if they don't, now you yeah. could use it as an insurance go, okay, that didn't work out for me. I can now wild card. But I think, no, you, you'd steam into whatever's got the best fixtures then for the last 16 and treat that as the free hit. So I think what a lot will end up doing is you, if if you're going to save one of the chips back, you probably only want to build a team for two match days. There are three, obviously, but you only want to build for two. Yeah. I can't see a circumstance where someone's going to go, I'm going to go limitless quarterfinal and wildcard semifinal. No. Nah. So you don't even need to think about all three match days. And as said, if you want to go down the path where you go, wildcard two limitless free and treat them as free hits you don't need to think about anything now other than match day one so if you're taking that sort of route you look at say italy's group as an example and you might think right so italy have got croatia spain albania right it's albania and match day one you might think right well a lot of these guys ain't going to want to look at too much italy against spain in match day two i'll go free italy now for match day one because i only need to think about match day one if you're using limitless and free and holding the wild card back, do you want to look at free Italy players against Spain in match day two? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. You can, right? I think particularly the fullbacks we'll talk about next week are possibly going to be um, DiMarco and Di Lorenzo are probably going to be quite popular, for example. But even still, you might be looking at maybe, maybe the maximum one rather than... Yeah, if you're be using, other... If you're free hitting one, maybe you go like double Italy defence, for example. Yeah. So it's weighing up the the pros and the cons. I think for what I think I will end up doing, which is the limitless three and then wildcard quarterfinal, there's there's two teams that become massively on radar for me. Go on. Who are uh, they? And those are Germany and Belgium, which it, it partly goes back to what I said about the, the most difficult games for the favourites in the group tends to land in match day two. Well, for these two, it doesn't, in my opinion. So if you're just looking at match days one and two, Germany got Scotland and Hungary. And it's worth saying, I think Hungary are a pretty underestimated team um, who you may remember gave Germany a, a panic massively in the last Euros, yeah. nearly knocked them out in the group stage. We all thought we were getting hungry for a bit in the last six days. We did, It yeah. didn't matter. We did the Germans anyway. <laughs> um, but I still think as a, as a cluster of two fixtures compared to England doing Serbia and Denmark. Like, I think that's much better. That's not to say I'm not going to have England players. I will certainly yeah. have something in them defensively. What's Belgium's? But I, but I think, yeah, definitely Germany. Belgium is Slovakia and Romania. Okay, yeah. It doesn't really get much better than that. Yeah. I spoke to um, many of our listeners and viewers might remember Callum Mates, who won our advanced tier mini league a couple of years ago and came on, did a fantastic podcast with me and Serge on FPL. He's Romanian. Uh, spoke to him a couple of weeks ago and said, "Look, you know, weak group, right? You got a big chance here and stuff." 
and he pissed himself laughing. He's like, James, we're so bad, mate. Oh, like, wow. Like, okay. Honestly, yeah. It, um, and I don't think Slovakia in that group are going to be up to too much either, either, which means as well, by default, Switzerland and Ukraine are of interest to me as well because they'll have the same two fixtures. It's just a bit disappointing. There's nothing massively I fancy from Switzerland offensive. There's a, there's a couple of Ukraine lads uh, that I think could be really interesting that we'll talk about a little bit more next week when we go into specific suppliers. But nice. yeah, ge- if I target heavily Germany, Belgium, by following that path by default as kind of more mid price players, Ukraine and Switzerland, I think, are, are quite interesting. Okay. Um, Belgium, I think, particularly no matter what you look at, and I think Germany as well, everyone's going to have a German player because yeah. of night one, unless, like I said, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. And I understand if you want to go so Maybe up you somebody, meant to be there. fine. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have done that. But big love to the Scots, and I hope they do really well. I'm, I'm really sad for them. They've got so many injury problems. Are you? Yeah, no, I am. I, I said this time last year that I thought they... They had a genuine shot that if the if things worked out, they could maybe be like a quarter finalist here. Well, that's what about doing so think many they've injuries. They've got a good squad. Yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah, I think the optimism has come down quite a lot since qualification, unfortunately, because of because of those injuries have been pretty bad for them. But yeah, they'll they'll equip themselves well. I don't think Germany are gonna smash them five 0 or anything no. like that. And opening games aren't normally like that, which is why again I don't mind if people just go, Yeah, balls, I'm going middle start as captain next yeah. week if he's in the team. That sort of one is going to be almost unavoidable at 4 million if he's starting for the host nation or one of the favourites and they're the only team playing on night one. I don't know how. What's his own going to pick? I'm going to pick a more expensive German defender. I don't know why. The only reason you pick a different German defender is if you're going for two. And that might be what I end up doing, by the way. Go on, please. I was just going to ask, what's his uh, ownership? Do you know? Is he is he like uh, a, a fantasy no. football Twitter unearthed gem or is he a... Uh... It's... Not very well known player. I, I'll have a look in a sec, but when I last looked, he was about 10% owned. I can tell you, he's 13%. I'll just have a yeah. look. Well, that would be increasing because people are putting out content and going, yeah. we're telling everyone for James. If it's not me, <laughs> it's someone else, right? Don't worry about it. So that'll increase. And also, I think even if people wait to the end, because they're the first game, Oh look, there's a four million start in Germany defender. I'm mean, it probably will take a sizable jump right in the last hour. Probably, yeah. I should imagine as well, just because that they play first. Ownership's quite interesting. And you do need to factor it into your play a little bit. Because you gotta remember it's it's a it's a congested uh, it's a congested tournament. It's mm-hmm. seven match days. Um and a, there's a number of teams will be out after three or four, right? And you've only got to cut the teams left playing at the end. So there's some fairly obvious players who are obviously going to have some massive ownership. I'm not going to shock anyone by telling them, hey, guess what? Kylian Mbappe is massive in this game. Like, you can go without him, but you know what the potential you punishment seen, is. You've seen this percentage. Uh, it's 76%, isn't yeah, it? That's Which absurd. there's no other player over 50%. That's absolutely bonkers. And... In any case as well, when you break this down realistically, and I tell you that Kylian Mbappe is 11 million, it's not Haaland's 14, is it? No. Nah. It's 11 million. It's, cl- it's the same price as Harry Kane. Yeah. Why do you want to fight against that? I mean, you look at the, the top price players in the game, Ronaldo's 10 million. So there's only three players above 9.5. Even at 9.5, there's only three players, De Bruyne, Bellingham, Lewandowski. And I think Poland are probably the weakest team in that group. So mm-hmm. Lewandowski, is, for me, is pretty much an easy lead. Griezmann's nine, Lukaku's nine, Foden's nine, Fernandez nine. That's it. Yeah. That's <clears> it. <throat> um, so, I, yeah, I probably don't advise going against Kylian Mbappe. What's an interesting spin-off of that is, um, for those who care about their EOs and stuff, he's obviously, <laughs> it'll be interesting, I think, what what the captaincies have done before France's game come comes round against Austria. What's really interesting with that is as well, I, I'm not even sure that he's the best captain on day four. No, who do you think is? I, it might be Lukaku against Slovakia. Oh. It might be. Um, but yeah, do you want to take it on? 
I'll give you a spoiler. On the draft I've got at the moment, I've got um, I've got both of those players. I've got Mbappe and Lukaku. Um, partly because of what I said. I mean, Belgium's going to be probably quite important for what I want to do. But yeah, if it, if people have gone with Kane and he's got, I don't know, two assists and he's on eight the day before, that's probably the sort of borderline where enough people be like, I don't want to gamble it. But it'd be yeah. enough others going, Jesus, I've got to gamble this here for... Mbappe. Austria aren't terrible. Nah, but uh, it's more the upside of Mbappe versus a Lukaku, regardless of the opposition. But over the over the short format, where's the upside? Let's let's be honest. It's against the weaker teams, I guess. Yeah. Well, no, not necessarily that. The upside there would be with Lukaku as an example, or 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 De Bruyne or Trossard from a captaincy perspective, because. It's seven match days. If you just do exactly the same thing as everybody else, you ain't winning the game. No, I've seen the prize. I don't know if anybody actually wants to win. The what game. is the prize? I've not no, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying it publicly. People okay. can look for themselves. All right. <laughs> People might argue it's better than the FPL prizes. I might beg to differ. I would probably prefer a stress ball actually, but that's oh, really? just me. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not going down that rabbit hole because I like upset awesome too many tickets people. No, nah, leave off, mate. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you just do the same thing as everybody else, you, you can have to do something different, but also understand the deeper the game goes, the more the more difficult it becomes to fight against the template, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if you take, for example, under this format, there'd be plenty of the guys listening who played UEFA Fantasy. At the weekend, what was there to do to do different when you've just got Real Madrid and Dortmund left at the end? Unless you're like this guy who forgot to do his team for the final. Yeah, but the differences in people was, well, I'm going Vinicius captain, I'm going Bellingham captain. That's about yeah. it. And just make your choice from there. And when it comes to it at the end, the advice, by the way, um, is probably get a blanket defence of someone. Yeah. And hope they keep a clean sheet, which is what happened with me with Real Madrid at the weekend. So, yeah, you've got to be aware of it, but you can skin that both it's ways. You've got to remember ways, it's yeah. short. It's not 38 game weeks. So it might be, oh, you know, it might be that you swing against Mbappe right at the start and it kills you at the start. Fine. But what if it goes the other way? What if you do take him on and, and the Kaku was to get a hat-trick against Slovakia, for example? You're you're in. Yeah. So, yeah. Skin it your own way. Cheers, Clates. Enjoyed that. Anything nice. we've missed from this? For no, the opening? I'm off to go look what the prize is after we stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> let's <laughs> crop your screenshots people there's the <laughs> advice right um we will do a proper watch list we'll go through all 24 teams a bit more detail next week. i think that's going to be more useful once people got through the last run is um for some confirmed squads right yeah like for england for example they're not the only ones a lot of, a lot of nations have already confirmed their squads there's bound to be one or two injuries over the weekend and stuff and there'll be like a four million player who was not on anybody's radar next week, might be next week, for example. So it's probably going to be next Wednesday. We'll cover off a definitive watch list and we'll kind of do a final drafts pod towards the end of next week as well. Lovely stuff. Super. Cheers, Kates. Remember, if you're playing, guys, play it your way and be nice to each other. Cue music, please. Manchild. 